Megan Barker. Welcome to Jammin' and Jammies. We are sitting down with some of our favorite songwriters and music creators. We're going to find out how they got where they are and get some valuable insights into the music world. You can watch the interviews online or tune into the podcast. Just check out jamminandjammies.com for all the details. Today we are sitting down with Holly Anna. Holly is a singer-songwriter here in Nashville, but she's also a viral TikTok sensation. So let's dive in and ask her a whole bunch of questions. Holly, how are you? I'm wonderful. How are you, Meg? I'm so good. We have to be professional and pretend that we're not really good friends when we do this. I know, right? <laughs> I'm actually so excited. I've been wanting to do this for a long time because you are all the things of, of talent. So do you want to just start by telling everyone like like where you're from and how did you get into music? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm originally from the Southern Indiana area and like I was born in Louisville. It's so like really close to the Louisville area. And I started playing guitar around campfires when I was like maybe 13. And then when I was 14, I joined a classic rock cover band and it was as fun as it sounds. We were like a bunch of like preteens, you know, playing these like classic rock songs all over like the Louisville, Kentucky area. And it was just the most fun. And around that same time, I started writing songs. And then eventually I started going to Nashville when I was like 16 and kind of discovered this whole other world of music with like co-writing and writer's nights and writer's rounds and all the stuff that I didn't know existed. And really you don't know you that exists until you come to Nashville, or at least not back then. Cause this is what, like 15 years ago, <laughs> we didn't have shows like Nashville or podcasts like jamming and jammies back then to like teach everyone about what goes on in Nashville. So at 18, I moved here, moved here as in Nashville and um, went to college for entertainment industry studies and music business and just fell in love with the whole realm of entertainment industry. And then very long roundabout way, I ended up like moving to New York city for a while, worked in the music business, doing like digital marketing, realized I missed performing. And about four and a half years ago, I moved back to Nashville and started doing music full time. I always tease Holly that her life sounds like, like a Hallmark movie. <laughs> Well, like this girl goes from like small town Indiana to the big city of Nashville and then to New York and then it doesn't work out. So she goes, I don't know. It just sounds like a great Hallmark movie. So, um, okay. When, uh, you went to college for, for music. What yeah. For, it? um, entertainment industry studies and music business technically. So it was cool because it was like a lot of focus on like publishing and copyright law and music business stuff, but it also touched on like film production and like distribution and like book publishing and all of these other things that I love, like, as I'm sure we'll talk about at some point today, but I'm very much in a lot of little facets of the entertainment industry. So I'm really glad that I didn't only focus on the music business part. I liked learning about, you know, the other stuff as well. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, speaking of music, do you remember the song or the artist that inspired you to, to kind of get into music and play around campfires oh goodness um most of the first songs I learned on guitar I think were from the chicks um Dixie Chicks back then but the chicks and um but even before then the first artist I was ever like in love with was Chris Ledoux do you remember Chris Ledoux yes yeah <laughs> Yeah, of course. Literally, like the Garth Brooks song, I had a worn out tape of Chris Ledoux um, in my dad's flatbed truck. And it was as, you know, country as it sounds. Like we would like ride our horses and, you know, be pulling the horses with the flatbed truck and be listening to the tape of Chris Ledoux. And I just fell in love with that like old cowboy country music. Wow. Okay. You've written with some of Nashville's biggest songwriters. What are some things you can, you've taken away from? writing with huge writers and writing for so long you've been writing songs for a long time now one thing I love about going into any writer's room no matter how big or small the writer is is just realizing that like everyone is just a human you know everyone is just a person who like wants another connection with a person and all of these incredible creative writers from brand new writers to people with 20 number one hits we're all just people. I know that sounds silly, but I think as a new writer, first going into those rooms with these massive writers, it's terrifying because you don't know what to expect. And you just think like, there's this massive pedestal that we put for people who have all of these like accolades and they totally, absolutely deserve that. But when we go into that creative space in the writer's room, to a degree, it's kind of like all of that fades away. And like, the only thing that matters is the song and like the creative process and what we come up with. So I guess what I've learned from it is don't be scared working with whoever you're working with because you know it's all about the song in the end yeah we all have the same goal I love that 
That's amazing. Okay, you've been releasing music as an artist. So you've been a songwriter for a long time. You're also an artist, and you've been doing it all on your own. So what is something that you've learned? You you learned a lot in Belmont, I'm assuming. But what are some things you've learned about releasing music independently? You have to do everything yourself. Well, it's so strange because... I did learn a lot of Belmont. Don't get me wrong. Absolutely. But it was a different world back then. Like I graduated college back in 2014. I mean, Spotify was just not getting started. Like distribution was completely different. Like, you know, I mean, even things like Instagram were still really, really new and like things like TikTok hadn't even been thought of yet. So it was a lot it was a lot of trying and failing, you know, I think as all of us independent artists kind of learn and like, thank goodness for having musician friends like you, because Megan and I talk about music stuff and entertainment stuff literally every day and kind of keep each other sane and help each other through the whole process. So, oh my goodness, if I've learned anything doing it all myself is that it's totally fine to fail. The amount of times I've uploaded something and then it just comes out completely wrong. Oh goodness. (laughs) My first full length album that I like did all the artwork. I did all like the, you know, the cool Photoshopping effects and all these things. <laughs> you know how you open up an album and you like read the thing across. I flipped it. So it read it backwards. <laughs> oh so I printed God. a thousand copies wrong. <laughs> oh my gosh. If it makes you feel any better though, I think it was the first EP that I ever printed too. I had so like a big text at the uh, when you open it up there's like a big text I don't even remember what it said and I like doubled it it said it twice so these are things that we would you just have to learn yeah yeah absolutely yeah we just have to learn it and that's and, okay you know it doesn't have to be perfect no but then you have a thousand of these little mistakes floating around <laughs> <laughs> I, I gave them away anyway I was just giving out my music at that point so it's fine oh for sure absolutely yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, aside from double checking your work, do you have any tips for songwriters and singers that are just starting out? Maybe somebody just got to Nashville. I would say the only way that you can possibly fail is to not try. And I know that sounds cheesy because I mean, I know everyone's not going to win a Grammy. Everyone's not going to get a record deal, all of these things, but success looks like so many different things now in the music industry and the entertainment industry. So if you're here and you're brand new and you're terrified don't even think about failing. Don't even like worry about that. Just, just go for it. Just, just try whatever you feel like you need to do creatively. Just go for it. Just get out there. I love it. You're so happy. You're so inspiring. (laughs) You're just like a little ball of joy. I love it. Um, okay. I love talking about music, but you are, you're so much more than music too. So let's segue into the digital world. Cause that's probably why a lot of people are here is they want to find out how she did it these last couple of years. So, <laughs> um, but let's start with social media in general, in your opinion, how important do you think social media is for new artists? And do you think songwriters need to be active on social media? I'm obviously going to be biased in this question because social media is like my whole job now, my whole world, like all of my like success is all like social media based. So I am biased and would say very important. I think it's extremely important. And there are always different ways to make it. You know, you can make it as a touring artist, you can make it by, you know, doing like label auditions and getting signed. There's a million ways you can make it as a songwriter first. But if you're an independent artist, just getting started on your own, there's no other way that you can reach millions of people overnight rather than social media. And that is just magic. That is just an opportunity that we in the entertainment industry have never had honestly before TikTok. I know we kind of had it with YouTube and we kind of had it with Instagram, but just the viral ability that you have on TikTok to just have your life change overnight is ridiculous. So, I mean, what I would say to new artists is like, why not? If you know, you're going to unwrap the chocolate bar and you might get the golden ticket. Yeah. Buy the chocolate bar. Like, (laughs) Why not? I love that. Okay. That's going to be like the quote from this whole interview. I love that. That's amazing. Okay. Well, can you take, I know it's complicated, but can you take us kind of into how you built your TikTok the last couple of years? Cause you started right in the beginning of 2020. Yeah. Um, end of 2019. So I was early on the TikTok train. It's funny. Cause you know, of course, when I started, I was like, Oh, I'm so late. I'm so late to the TikTok train. But now <laughs> we didn't know what it was going to turn into. We didn't know that TikTok would become like an empire of like the social media world, you know? So I, you know, like all of us singer songwriters had been on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and was trying to promote my music and was just getting so frustrated because, you know, in the past few years, 
everything felt like it was getting taken over by bots. And it was just so hard to promote your music like organically. And, you know, more social media sites were pushing for you to buy ads to get your video seen by your own audience. And I was talking to a friend and a co-write and he was talking about another friend who was gaining 200 followers an hour on TikTok. And I was just like, there's no way, there's no way. Yeah, there's a way. (laughs) And it is ridiculous. So December of 2019, I was just like, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to post on TikTok every single day. And that's what I did. And I just realized like I was posting my music, but then I just started posting my life and I started doing the trends and I started doing like vlog style things and crafting. And I fell in love with the entire world of content creation. And it was like a month or two before I had my first like viral video. And it just kind of kept building from there. Like, you know, the next big video, the next big video. And I just fell in love with the entire community that is TikTok. And it's been a wild ride. So it's been like a little over two years and we're at 1.2 million followers, which is ridiculous that that is like a real number that exists. I can't comprehend it, honestly. Um, sorry, I'm kind of off track from the question, but no, yeah, no, you're not. No, yeah, oh, I, I know where I was going with all this. I don't think I probably would have dove into TikTok as much without the quarantine, without the pandemic, which I think TikTok itself, you know, attributes a lot of the, everyone was home, everyone was on their phones, you know, everyone was looking for something like some human connection and just a way to see people, you know? And so in 2020, March of 2020, I was supposed to be going on tour. It was going to be like our second tour. We were so excited. Everything was booked. And our first show was going to be March 25th. So obviously we all know how that went. And I'm very sad that we had to cancel the tour, but I ended up basically just sitting in my room for a year making videos and it turned into this and it's just crazy. Isn't it amazing how something so crazy in our lives, there's this beautiful silver lining where you'll, I'm sure you'll always do music, but you've got a whole other world that you've dove into now. And it's your, it's your job. It's your like livelihood. And you're even doing some consulting now. Um, so you're telling other people how to grow their TikToks. Um, what's the number one question you get asked about TikTok and how to grow? How do I go viral? (laughs) Yeah, Holly. I'm going to lie. (laughs) If you could give us the scoop, Jammin' and Jammies, if you could give us the scoop, please tell us how do you go viral? (laughs) If only it were that easy. I feel bad because like, yes, I do. I do consulting. It's been awesome. I've basically taken my, you know, my music business background and my background working in digital marketing in New York mixed with, you know, my experience of TikTok and it turned it into this consulting, I don't know, side job, like small business. I don't know what we call it something, but it's been awesome. And we're working like labels and publishers and independent artists and like some companies that aren't even in the music business. And everyone asks how to go viral. And I feel bad because like, there's no magic button. There's no magic viral button that if you do this one thing or post at one time or use this hashtag, that it's just magically going to work. But you do so, give everybody like a toolkit where if you do. Oh yeah. Things, yeah. 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 And if I could leave you with one thing, like if I could tell people one thing that will help you go viral more than anything else, <laughs> this is the one key. Every time you post a video, ask yourself, does this video do one of these three things? Does it educate? Does it inspire? Or does it entertain? Ask yourself, what is the value that this video gives the consumer? If it doesn't educate, entertain, or inspire, maybe think about another like angle to go at, you know, for the video. It's brilliant. It's a lot, it's a lot, it sounds a lot simpler than it is, obviously. (laughs) But if you think about it, I mean, like literally it's all take a second to think about our favorite videos, whether it's funny, whether it's music, like whatever it is, informative. Mm -hmm. First of all, I can think of a million little things I've learned just scrolling through TikTok, like little Mm -hmm. things. But yeah. um, if you think about it, that rule really applies to everything that we grab onto. It Maybe. really does. Yeah. And I just ask, tell people too, just to think about it. Obviously it's, it's like, it's like a song, you know, we're so attached to our song babies. We're so atta- attached to like the, the content that we make. So it's hard to look at our own content objectively. It's hard to look at our own songs objectively, but I have to ask myself, like, if this was on my for you page, would I watch it? That's a you fair know? question. Yeah. You have to. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you just you're just like the guru you've worked with some huge brands now like huge brands on social media campaigns like what are some things you've taken away to working with these huge companies is that a little intimidating at first I was scared (laughs) at first I'm not gonna lie 
but it's funny it kind of goes back to almost the same answer as with the um with like the hit songwriters going into work with these big brands you know especially if it's a brand you've heard of we have this image of like oh it's a it's a brand but it's really just people like everything is just people you know and like everybody wants to like you know, educate, entertain, inspire. Everybody wants to like share their journey and get their product out there. So like working with brands at such like a personal level has been really, really cool because you kind of get to see like the faces behind the brands, the people who are making this content. And I think TikTok, it's been hard for some brands to like adjust to TikTok because we're so used to these like perfect and honestly, same thing with artists and musicians, because we're so used to this perfectly polished image that we have to look a certain way and talk a certain way. And everything is like perfectly scripted and TikTok. My most viral video was filmed in nine seconds at 4 a.m. sitting on my bed. <laughs> you know, like you just you just never know. And TikTok definitely rewards that like genuineness, that just not Photoshop, just in the moment, real, like feeling like you're on FaceTime with somebody. So yeah, that was a side tangent from that question. I'm sorry, but oh, basically what I've learned from working with companies. <laughs> I feel like everybody that's creative, which is most people, we kind of tend to be perfectionists in one way or another. And I heard somebody recently say, don't be so precious. And that's really stuck with me the last few weeks because we will agonize over something, a video, a song, whatever, until it's perfect or until we talk ourselves out of liking it, which is Mm -hmm. usually what happens. Stop being so precious and just put your creativity out there. Yeah. I always say this, like, it does not matter if you are the most talented person in the world, if only your four bedroom walls see it, whether it's your video, your comedy, your songwriting, doesn't matter. And I'm sure you agree. It's always probably better to post something than nothing. Yeah. Well, I should say it does matter if you, if you get joy out of, you get joy out of the creative process that matters, but like, you know, you have to put it out there for it, for other people to see it, you know? So sometimes it's better to not wait until it's absolutely perfect. It is better to put something out there than nothing for sure. And I'm sure that you had to post a lot of different things to kind of figure out what worked too. Oh my gosh. I look back at my videos from even a year ago and I, I cringe a little bit and, you know, I think that's a good thing because, yeah. you know, what is the saying? Like, if you don't cringe at yourself from a year ago, that means you're not, yes. you're not growing. I love that. <laughs> and I don't cringe in a bad way. It's just, I just learned so much more about like my voice and my filming style and just kind of who I am as a person and who I am as a creator. And it just, it's just so funny to like, look back even six months to a year ago and just see the different way I was styling my videos. But it's really cool to see the progress. For sure. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Tell me what are some common misconceptions people have about being an influencer? You're so lucky. You just post videos from your bedroom and make a living. (laughs) Oh, do people say that to you? I've had it said a few times. Yeah. And like, it is, it's like, I feel so bad even bringing that up because they are not wrong. I am extremely lucky. Like this is an incredible job. I love, love, love what I do, but there are like hundreds of hours of work that go in behind the scenes of like researching and strategizing and like (sighs) scheduling and just learning everything about this world, you know, it is why it's hard, you know, like when I tell like my clients, like, you know, you need to be posting two to 10 times a day, realistically to be like having a chance of going viral. That's just the start of it. It's not just two to 10 times a day. It's two to 10 times that are researched and strategized and planned out and you have series planned. And so I think that is to me, like something I do here a a decent amount, you know, just like, oh, like, must be nice. You know, it's so lucky and it is, it is nice. And I am lucky. So I feel even weird, like kind of bringing that up, but there's a lot more, I think that goes on behind the scenes than what people, than what people see. You shouldn't feel weird about bringing that up because (laughs) I think you should help bring light on that because I feel like, um, I feel like entertainers in general kind of get that, like, oh, it must be nice. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of people have no idea how much goes into every little thing that you do. I mean, and that's not even talking about the music side of stuff that you're always working on too, of course. Yeah. I mean, I've talked to um, some bigger writers who have said kind of similar things, you know, maybe if like one song paid for basically their whole life and people are like, oh, that's so lucky. You know, you wrote one song and it's like, no, they wrote thousands of songs. The one song broke through and they went to thousands of writers nights and like hundreds of meetings. And that's the part that I think the consumer doesn't see is everything that happens behind the scenes just to get out this tiny, tiny thing. 
They don't see it yet. They're going to see it because we're talking about it. <laughs> we're so. talking about it. Exactly. About it. Okay. Well, I appreciate you being so honest and letting us in on all the work and the struggle. And I mean, it's not all sunshine and roses. I'm sure there were some hard moments, but um, you're killing it. You're just on fire. So what is next for you? I know that you have been focusing on YouTube a little bit more lately and you're blowing up. Tell us about that. I, um, oh my goodness. I have tried to do YouTube in the past so many times, like starting when I was in high school. Oh my gosh. Throwback for a second. Starting when I was like maybe 16 or 17, I decided I was going to post a video of an original song every single Wednesday. And that's how I like started YouTube, like way back in the day. And it was incredible. I did it for like a hundred weeks straight and ended up leading to this really weird experience where I got to like make videos for one of Disney's like YouTube channels. It was this whole like whirlwind crazy experience. But after I finished with that hundred weeks, I just stopped on YouTube. And now looking back, I'm like, oh, dang, I never should have stopped on YouTube, you know, but and then, sorry. And then once I started with TikTok, I kept telling myself, I need to get back on YouTube. I need to get back on YouTube. And I tried a bunch of times and every time I would post like five videos and then stop when I would get frustrated. So in December, mid-December, I think it was the 18th, I told myself, okay, I am posting five YouTube shorts a day, every single day, no matter what. And I'm not going to stop because YouTube is really, really pushing shorts. Every social media platform is trying to compete with TikTok. So like on Instagram and Facebook, we have reels and on YouTube, we have shorts, all of these like vertical videos that are under 60 seconds. They're just trying so hard to compete with TikTok. And so I was looking at, you know, my whole arsenal of videos that I filmed over the last two years on TikTok. And I was like, I should be repurposing these for YouTube. So that's what I've been doing. I've been going back through my old TikTok videos and downloading about five a day and then re-uploading them to YouTube shorts. And for the first few weeks, I didn't see like any traction and then it just skyrocketed. And on January 1st, we had 4,000 subscribers and today we're at 97,000 and it is what, February 3rd? Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. You guys, when she said she started in December, she means like a month ago. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. (laughs) It's been crazy. And I'm just so glad that I did not give up that I just kept posting those shorts every single day. And then I've also been diving into like you know, learning how to do like the long form YouTube content where, you know, we go through like a whole process where there's like vlogging or like a weird hair video or something like that. And that has been incredible. And I've been uploading like two to three long form videos every week, as well as like five shorts a day. So it is an extreme amount of content. But once again, this is like my full-time job and what I want to be my full-time job. You know, I want to live in this world of content creation. So YouTube is definitely on my mind this year. I want to kind of fully become a YouTuber. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> as silly so, as that sounds. What, what does that dream look like? I mean, do you want to travel? Do you want to like, what does that look like for you? Yeah, I definitely. I mean, I would love, love, love to eventually like be in a place where we can get a van. Like we really are interested in like van life and then like to like remodel the whole van and then start traveling the country, doing like travel vlogging and exploring. That is like what I see as next. And in my perfect world, everything kind of meshes together. I would love to do like a tour with like so far sounds or like a tour opening for some artist in like, a, you know, a theater setting while doing the van life thing and vlogging it for like YouTube and while like live streaming it on YouTube and Twitch. And I don't know. I just have this, I don't, I just feel so excited right now. I just feel like all these possibilities are in front of me and I'm just super excited to see what the next few years are going to look like. It's so exciting. And you answered my next question, which was ne- what's next for you musically. So music has not stopped. You're still going to be writing and releasing and doing all kinds of stuff. So uh, nobody freak out just because she's blowing up on, <laughs> on YouTube does not mean she's going to forget about us um, because your TikTok fans are hardcore original music requesters. I've seen it on your lives. They are. Um, well, it, it was kind of a happy accident because on TikTok live, I honestly, I've never gotten an exact answer from TikTok. It kind of depends who you ask, but um, it kind of seems like so far as copyright laws go, they don't want you to play cover songs on TikTok live. So some people have said, yes, you're fine. You're not getting in trouble. And some people have said, "Ah, maybe stay away from cover songs just so you don't, you know, encroach on copyright infringement. So just to play it safe, I always only played original music. 
And it was like the best thing that ever happened. So I'd play all of these, you know, TikTok live shows where I go on TikTok live for like an hour, hour and a half. And I just play original music. And it's been the most like magical experience to watch people like sing along in the chat. (laughs) It's so cute, you know? Um, Yeah. So, I mean, I'm definitely still writing. I'm still planning on recording and releasing, but content creation is definitely, I think right now, my main focus and music is like a facet of that. Whereas I think when I joined TikTok, it was like, oh, I'm joining this platform to promote my music. And it's weird how it's all like flipped, but it's all still there. You know, you've it's all still a part of me too. Like, I'm sorry to interrupt, but like, you got no, no, no. like, if you're on fire, you've got like a hundred thousand followers basically in the last six weeks or whatever, you got to ride that as long as you can. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would tell people for sure, like ride it as long as you can, as long as it fe- still feels like you, like, I still, I feel very lucky that I enjoy this whole part of it. Cause I talk to a lot of artists who are my clients who hate the world of content creation you know, and I don't blame them. It is not for everybody. You know, if they just want to write the songs and put them out there, I totally understand that. But for me, like I get as much joy out of the content creation as I do out of the songwriting. It's just another creative facet that I love. That's wonderful. I also just realized that I just said it's January and it's actually February. (laughs) Or go, it's going well. It's February 3rd. It's like, that's like January plus, you know what I mean? It's just, (laughs) yeah, there's like a buffer in there. It's fine. Um, okay. Well, all of this, do you consider yourself an entrepreneur? Oof, that's a good question. I guess so. Technically you, you you kind of are in the business of Holly. You own a business. It's very strange. Yeah. Um, I would say even more so now, like than in the past, um, like, I know we've talked about this a lot as friends, but um, I am a, this is something for, for anyone who wants to be an influencer or even just any musician or anyone with a social media presence who is looking for new ways to branch out and make passive income, look into being an Amazon affiliate. I will just say like that has become a big part of like my income stream. And it is interesting. I've had to think about that almost more like as a business. It's basically just where like whenever you post about a product that you buy on Amazon, you can link it in your like Amazon affiliate store. Then people can go to your storefront and buy it from there. And then you get like a commission. So it's, it's definitely like opened my eyes a lot because I've had a lot of people ask me questions like about the idea of me releasing products in the future. Like would I ever design my own like brand of hair curlers or like things like that. And that's kind of been like on my mind a lot recently because I have merch obviously that goes like with my brand, but that's not the same as like creating a whole product line. So that's definitely something that's on my mind for the future of kind of potentially maybe releasing a product at some point in life (laughs) that goes along with everything. I would love to see that. I would love to see you have your own line. I I absolutely manifesting it right now. I know you have (laughs) multiple lines of different things because you've you're just so creative if you guys don't follow holly which you probably do but if you don't you have to follow her she's always you're always like knitting and like cross stitching and all this i know nothing about like crafty stuff guys i don't even know what cross stitching is but she probably does it and it's just amazing like i just i feel like i'm talented like one thing and you have so many creative talents it's amazing gonna make me blush (laughs) (laughs) okay Um, no no the amazon thing is just very um prevalent right now i think that's such great advice for anybody watching because i can't tell you how many times i've like been influenced basically somebody posted something and i was like i need that and it said link in bio and boy did i click it and buy it yeah absolutely i mean And this is a huge thing of like me and my social media presence i will never ever post about a product that I don't believe in. And I think my followers hopefully know that at this point. So I'm never just like trying to make the sale, you know, and trying to just post about things. Like I've even had to have some like hard conversations with companies where like, you know, we'll be in the process of a brand deal or of sort of like a gifted brand deal, whatever it may be. And then if the product doesn't work, you have to have that. I have to have that conversation with like, I'm sorry, we can't, you know, go through with this because I don't want to ever be like representing things that I don't fully believe in because then that like waters down the brand you know what I mean it waters down this like authenticity that like I always want to try to maintain it's cross so platforms that you do that that is so valuable because you know what the companies are are paying you for is the time that you've put in with your audience to build that trust you know True. and it's taken you a long time to build this relationship with your followers if they trust you and you let them down they might not make another purchase so yeah that's, that's great yeah stand your ground 
you can do it. <laughs> if you even had like, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, oh, no, 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 go ahead. I was going to say like, it kind of, it's so funny because I've had a few videos go viral. This is a little bit off topic from the product thing, but kind of keeping with like the trust. I've had a few vi videos go viral because of a mistake I've made. And I have a lot of questions, a lot of comments that are like, you did this on purpose to go viral. No, <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was that. I just, <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Like I'm terrible at spelling. And I did this video that was a, um, a, an accent challenge. It was like words commonly pronounced differently around the U S I misspelled three of the words. Oh my god! <laughs> so everyone thought it was like an Easter egg trying to go viral. No, it did go viral. It was really, really cool. Like people around the world did the challenge, but oh my goodness, you know, well, happy it accident. Just, it doesn't help that there's no autocorrect on TikTok when you're talking. I know. Why is there no autocorrect? I don't get that. No autocorrect. I have no idea. It's very frustrating, but that's okay. It's... <laughs> It's on me not checking my work enough, but no, but kind of what I get, what I'm getting back to is I really want to always build that trust, like with my audience that they know things aren't going to be scripted. They're not going to be planned. I'm not going to be showing products that I don't believe in, you know? Yeah. 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 Wise. You're just so wise, Holly. <laughs> um, okay. I real quick, I want to touch on the music business and being a woman, or I mean, I guess it, in the, the entertainment business in general, what does it mean to you to be a female in the creative world? <sighs> the first time that I had a man tell me I was aging out of the industry, I was 24. And um, he said, I'm glad you're working with younger artists now that you're aging out. And um I was like, wait, what? You know, it just kind of like, it hits you. It just takes you kind of back for a second. And I mean, I look back even to how I looked at the world when I was 16, you know, and like, I just always thought like, oh my gosh, if I don't make it by 24, 25, like I'm done. And I'll be honest, I'm 29. And now I want to go back and tell my younger self, you did not need to freak out. You did not need to listen to that old man who told you that. You did not need to listen to everyone in the industry who says women have an age limit. Sorry, I know this. there's so much more to this issue, obviously, than just age. But age is such a big defining factor of like the way that women are perceived in entertainment. And it makes me so sad. Okay. And I honestly like being more like focused in the world of content creator. Truthfully, I'm less stressed. I'm less stressed about age and less stressed about being a woman. And I hate that because it makes me feel for my friends who are fully in the music industry who are women, you know? And um, I do think though that things are changing. I do think that, you know, it is every day more women are getting to break through this wall of whatever it may be, you know, like age or gender, et cetera. Like, I think that, I think it's becoming a lot more of an accepting and well-rounded environment. And I'm just so excited about that. And I, I think part of that is because of social media. I think that for so long when the only people, the only gatekeepers are people who are just like really high up in like the entertainment industry, I think it's easy for the only people to break through being, you know, what they consider the perfect artist. And then you get things like TikTok and like Spotify and you have people from all walks of life okay. making it. And then all of a sudden people realize like, wow, like people want to see everyone, you know? So I don't know if that answered the question. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, 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 it's such an important conversation and I'm so grateful that you're going there with me because this isn't easy stuff to talk about. Um, mm -hmm. You know, being a woman in music is in entertainment is great and it's so stressful. And I do feel like there's a lot of things women have to worry about that men don't. Um, appearance stuff, age stuff, all of that. I mean, I know women that want to start a family but feel like they can't until they reach a certain point in their career. And it's just crazy amounts of pressure. And I'm sorry that you had that experience and I've had similar experiences and it makes you lose sleep at night. And then you wrinkle prematurely and then you <laughs> It's terrible. But you know, I, I think you're so right about TikTok kind of exposing that everyone wants to be represented. Mm -hmm. And 
hopefully we're, I think we're starting to see more of that in music. Um, but um, you know, it, it's having 16 year old, you know, Taylor, I love Taylor Swift, but like having 16 year old singer songwriters is great, but there's so many other, you know, parts of life that need to be represented. And hopefully we're going to start seeing that. Absolutely. And like, when I look at my demographics on socials, <clears throat> excuse me, I mean, my biggest age group and I'm on every platform, I'm a 70 to 80% female, like my followers. And, um, it's all like my biggest age demographic is 18 to 25. And then my second biggest is like 26 to 35. Okay. And I just love seeing that because like, I feel like I'm finding this community where we can all like actually be like friends, you know? And I think people want that from the musicians that they watch, the actors, the influencers, like, people want that human connection that we've been like talking about kind of earlier, you know, everybody wants to have somebody that they connect with and they relate to. And if I can be that person for somebody out there, that just like, that means so much to me, you know, cause they are also that for me. It's like it's such a, you know, an interesting yeah. world that we've gone into socially. It's amazing. Well, especially after the last couple of years where everyone's felt very isolated and alone, it's a wonderful thing to have people like you that are, you feel, well, we are best friends, but to feel like this person is your best friend. I mean, I'm sure we yeah. all, think, all think of like some celebrities or influencers that we follow and like, you feel like you're friends with them and yeah. you don't really know them, but it's an amazing thing. So, uh, Social media is a good thing. You know, I don't mean to go off on a tangent, but uh, of course, too much of anything isn't good. Um, and of course, there are there are downsides to spending too much time on social media, the comparison thing everyone's talking about lately. But overall, it provides opportunity for musicians and actors and models and these people that want to build a, a presence like you and it makes people feel less alone. You learn things. Uh, like I was saying earlier, like all these stupid little kitchen things I've learned on TikTok. So would you agree that social media is a great thing? I would. And I would say it's becoming like an even more great thing. Like, and <laughs> I know that I love TikTok and TikTok a lot, you know, it's my home, but like I really do attribute so much of that to TikTok because I even look back at myself, like I'll just be totally honest, back in like 2018, 2019, whenever my whole world was Instagram, I was not the same type of happy that I am now. I was doing the comparison game continuously. I was Photoshopping every single photo, whether it was like nipping and tucking and getting rid of lines and like everything had to be that perfect polished. And I do think that with TikTok and with this like short form video content becoming so popular and it being real and like people wanting to see who you really are, I feel like that breaking down of walls is what is going to make social media a healthier place overall. Because like even on TikTok, like let's be real, <laughs> we like, we still only share our good moments. You know, that is the curse of social media. Like everyone is going to always share the good stuff, yeah. but it's also given the space to like post things without makeup, to not Photoshop, to talk about things that we're struggling with. And that kind of realness, like wasn't rewarded on any other platform. Amen. But apparently it's what people like want to see because the TikTok algorithm, the more you interact with something, the more it puts it on the for you page. Yeah. So, yeah, that's amazing. And like, seriously, on a personal note, you just got me thinking, I've struggled so much with anxiety the last few years and I had a real turning point last year and it, I swear it was because of TikTok. I found like, there's this whole anxiety world on TikTok of these now they're influencers, but they're just people that struggled and figured their way through it. And they're sharing their insight. I mean, there's some, there's some life-changing stuff out there. So I think it's a good thing. I think it is too. In moderation, I really do. Of course, of course. Yeah. In moderation. But yeah, I mean, it gives everybody a place where they can find their community. Like I did a, a YouTube and TikTok live the other night where I was uh, crocheting and I could not believe how many people in the chat were either crocheting or knitting like while watching Amazing. and it just made my heart so happy that we had this like little community of people who are just you know yarn yarn yeah. people <laughs> this community of people that are going to be really warm next time it snows <laughs> exactly yeah. exactly Amazing. okay well that that whole question started um or your answer started with some some bad comments that somebody said to you um what's some of the best advice you've ever gotten can you think of anything that inspired you 
Yeah. Um, okay. This is an advice directly given to me. This is from a book and I, we talked about this recently, so you probably know where I'm going with this, but I want to tell everyone about this book and about this like quote or like, I guess I'm um, paraphrased quote, cause I'm not going to remember it word for word. So I think everyone is familiar with the phrase or most people are familiar with the phrase. What would you do if you knew you could not fail? And I remember the first time I heard that, I remember I was a freshman in college and I remember hearing that and thinking, oh, I can go take on the world. Like, what would I do if I knew I couldn't fail? I would go like, you know, and I just applied that to my life and to the music industry and everything. And that's great. But recently I was reading Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert, and it is a book all about being a creative person. It is incredible. If you have even like anyone watching this, if you have 1% of you wants to pursue creative endeavors, please go read Big Magic. It will change your life. So towards the end of the book, she's talking about that quote, what would you do if you knew you could not fail? And she challenges the reader to think about it differently. She asks, what would you do tomorrow if you knew you would fail? It blew my mind because her point is, what do you love so much that you will do it? Even if you know, you'll never be successful. You never make money. You'll never receive any accolades. That is the thing you truly love. That's the thing you have to do no matter what. And then any success is just like a cherry on top, like a reward on top of it already, because the actual reward is doing what you love every day. Phenomenal reminder, because we all started out doing something because we loved it. And along the Mm -hmm. way, we lose that a little bit, you know, Yeah. Because, because of the stress and the pressures. If anybody's watching has been in music or entertainment for a long time, you know, there's some soul sucking moments. But when Holly told me that, about this the other day it sold elizabeth another book elizabeth gilbert (laughs) i literally went and bought the book um and i was planning to start it tonight while i'm folding laundry so um i can't wait it it, just her telling me that inspired me so thank you for sharing i'm so glad she wrote that book because it is it is life-changing i'm honestly i I do audiobooks like continuously and i'm probably gonna just listen to it again because you ever like read a book and you're like oh i'm gonna remember that i'm gonna remember that and then you know how our brains work so yeah it's definitely worth reading and worth reading again. <laughs> I'm so grateful that you shared that with us because um, I think we all need a little inspiration right now. Um, one more question. It has been, the entertainment industry is hard enough and it's been a really rough couple of years. Um, you know, creative stuff takes a lot longer than you think it's going to, always. Music, whatever. Um, I saw a lot of people in Nashville go home during COVID um, and maybe kind of throw in the towel a little bit. What would you say to somebody right now that was watching that their videos aren't going viral fast enough? They, their music isn't getting enough attention and they're thinking of throwing in the towel. Goodness. I always kind of come back to the idea of the only way that you can fail is to quit. Mm -hmm. But I will say like, especially as we get older and as more of our friends, like, you know, get married and move home and start families and stuff. I will remind people that like this world isn't for everyone and that is not a bad thing. I think like, you know, in your early twenties, anytime you see somebody like quit, you know, or give up, like, it's like, Oh, like they gave up. Like I'm never going to give up. It's like, I totally understand that. I understand like, this is a very, very strange life, like committing to a creative existence it is hard. You are not going to have a consistent paycheck. You are not going to have consistent health insurance. Like it is going to affect all your relationships and your sleep schedule and all of that. But if you look at all of that and you know, this is still what you want to do, I would just say, keep doing it. And I know that is so frustrating to hear, but if you actually show up every day, showing up is the most important thing in any job. And it holds so true in the entertainment industry. Show up every dang day and you will be moving forward. You may not see it. It may not look like you're moving forward, but you will be moving forward. Oh, I have goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's it's the, the best advice I think you could give because I mean, that's really a tough question that I leave people with lately. I, I've been asking a lot of people that question, but I feel like everyone needs inspiration. Everyone needs a kick in the butt from people like you that are just, you're doing it. But for a long time, you might not have felt like it. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Like, have you seen that chart that is like how long we think 
something yeah. takes and then there's like a line out here and it's like how long it actually takes there is like nothing more true than that I feel like because I look back at like where I was when I first moved back to Nashville like four and a half years ago when I first started doing like music entertainment all of this stuff like full time <sighs> I mean, like, I always thought I was further ahead than I actually was looking back. And even now, like, I finally am like at a place where I'm truly, truly like being a creator full time. And like, it is just incredible. And all these opportunities are happening. And like, I know that I'm still not as far as I think I am. I can, you know, and like, I can visualize, like I manifest the, you know, the world that I want to be living in in the next like two to five years. And that may actually be like five to 10 years away, but that's, that's okay. You know, cause I'm loving what I do on a daily basis. And I just want to keep chasing that. And if it stops making me happy, then I'm going to chase something else. Cause that's something that they don't tell you too. I feel like in art, we feel like we have to like suffer for our craft and we have to, you know, be like devastated over the song. And do you know what I mean? And yeah. I feel like it should, it shouldn't be like that. It should be happy like what what brings us joy you know what creative process brings us joy and Elizabeth Gilbert talks about that a lot in big magic as well so <laughs> we can get oh. the podcast like sponsored by Elizabeth Gilbert that would be oh awesome. my goodness oh my That's goodness amazing. just well, literal brilliance <laughs> I just love what you just said and I, I think something I'm taking away from what you just said too is like it's not quitting if it doesn't make you happy anymore first of all exactly if yeah. it doesn't make you happy don't do it I remember Marty yeah. Dotson um, male Marty Dotson um we sat down one day and did one of these and he said um basically just that if you can do anything else do it because this is tough so Mm -hmm. um but you know if this is what you want to do every single day every day is not easy but it's just great inspiration that you just gave everyone well I think it's like it's so easy to like romanticize it because once again the same thing as social media how we only post the good stuff right it's that way with like any creative endeavor whether it's like acting modeling excuse me writing a book like whatever it may be you only, the, the audience only sees the joy. They only see the end product. They only see the things we're like so excited about to post. So for a lot of people, like this doesn't end up being the path they actually want to take because like when you're really, really on this path, it looks a lot different than it looks from the outside. That's right. That's but right. I think, you know, you never had, the, we've had this talk so much. There's nothing else we can do. We're here. <laughs> we're like, yeah, we, we, we've been through the journey of like, is this what we want to do? And then we're uh-huh. like, Yep. Okay. Yep. So here we go. So here let's, we go. let's get some Taco Bell and talk it out because <laughs> get a good night's sleep because we're doing it again tomorrow. Doing it again tomorrow. Yeah. I love that. Okay. Well, I think this is a really good place to end. I can't believe I've kept you for almost an hour. So much good stuff. I kind of feel like we need to do this again sometime. Just, just, I would love it. to. It's just, this is amazing. So I love you. Thank you so much for taking the time. Love you too. And Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. So <laughs> and you wore your onesie. Is it Baby Yoda? Of course. Oh, yeah. It is Baby Yoda. It doesn't quite fit over my headphones the way I would like for it to, or I would have had this up the whole time, but <laughs> that's so cute. Thanks for getting in the spirit and being amazing. And um, I can't wait for everybody to see this. So we'll catch up again soon. Yay.